Hello, welcome to another Q&A session from the Reaper blog. Today, I have a bunch of questions that came in through the uh, Facebook group. So I'm just going to go through those today. I don't have a lot of time, so we're going to do this kind of a little more improvised and quick um, and hopefully get through a lot more questions in a shorter amount of time. Okay, so here we are at uh, the Reaper blog community Facebook page, and I asked uh, a couple days ago, ask me anything. First question comes from Jack Torcello. Is it possible to have random arpeggiation which follows more than one random pattern? Two or three arpeggiators instruments all playing randomly and independent of each other. I don't really know. I mean, you can have multiple arpeggiators. If you're using one random pattern, you'd probably have to record it in some way. Um, so record the MIDI, I guess record MIDI notes um, with the record output function. So you would go to uh, right click on a record enable button and choose record output MIDI. And then if you put in a arpeggiator in there, like, let's see, uh, cream, something like that. Yeah, cream CM would work. Um, random. I don't remember how this works at all. <laughs> Anyways, you, you put in an arpeggiated thing and then I think you can record the output. I guess you still need a, a MIDI input and then record. So you could take this and then output that to the other virtual instruments. And uh, then you're using one random seed for multiple virtual instruments. Um, I hope that's what you were asking. Um, not sure if that was, but that's the only thing I can think of right now. From Zach, is there a way to just highlight an envelope line? like volume, pan, trim, or bypass, and adjust that highlighted area without having to put in the double dots on the ends. Yes, yeah, so that's really simple. I believe what you're asking is, let's say you've got the uh, volume envelope here, and you want to make a time selection like this, and then drag that down to create that uh, envelope uh, segment change. And going up, it would look like this. Oops. That's in Preferences and Mouse Modifiers. You go to Envelope Segment, Left Drag, and you want that on Move Envelope Segment. So all I'm doing there is holding down Shift. Move Envelope Segment is adding in the four edge points. And yeah, it's really quick to do that. And if you don't want to change your mouse modifiers, you can always use this here on the, you can use the trim. Uh, on the left envelope panel. Next question comes from Gerardo. Are you aware of any video tutorial on how to use the VST bridge with Melodyne? I would say don't use the VST bridge because the new um, ARA version of Melodyne is going to be much more flexible. Um, that's, that's really an older version. It's for older systems, and there's not really any reason to do that uh, anymore. So just um, update Melodyne and use the new version, the VST3, and um, Bridge is going to be a much slower workflow, so I would not even bother. Next question comes from Ken. Could you comment on what gear you use to create your videos, processor, video cards, and or any extra video capture device? So I'm, I just had a panic. I thought I wasn't recording, but I am recording. So my audio interface is an audio fuse. I'm using a Rode NTG2. It's not my favorite shotgun mic, but uh, out of all of the mics that I have, it kind of has a good reach, so I don't have to be right up on the mic. Um, uh, ideally, I would have it out of the shot, but I don't really care. I think you guys don't care about seeing the microphone in the video. Well, let's see. I've got a, a light here. I've got background lights. I've got a light in front of me. I've got an, a, another light in front of me. Then for the capturing, I'm using ScreenFlow version 8. Uh, that's a Mac-only software, but it's one of the best 
screen capture software is out there. I'm often using Loopback, virtual audio driver router software. Um, I have a video showcasing that. Yeah, I think that's it. Once I finish the recording, I'm exporting out of ScreenFlow and bring it into Reaper, and I have a template all set up for that. ScreenFlow has a really good editor, but I find that when I'm adding in cameras or um, or once the edit gets really complicated, um, once I've gone through and done my rough cut, it, it gets really, really slow to, um, like every edit takes a, a second for it to like catch up and be ready to show me what's happening. Um, audio processing is terrible because there's no track-based effects. Mixing the audio for the video is just so much easier in Reaper, but it was such a pain to go back and forth between the two apps. Uh, now I just do everything in Reaper as much as possible, and um, I'm able to edit a lot faster, even though there's that extra render time before I can really get started. Next question comes from John. When can we have PT style quick punch? Uh, you got to just keep bumping that feature request, man. Um, make sure that the devs know that this is something we need and something that we want and kind of demonstrate the limitations that we have now and why we can't work without it. Um, I mean, obviously we can work without it, but there's certain situations where that is really important and, um, uh, and convenient to have. For those that don't know about uh, the Pro Tools quick punch mode, um, basically it's always recording in the background and as long as you punch in for a second, you can drag out the audio file back to the original play position. Um, one limitation with that is that you can't change which tracks are recording. Um, they have to be recorded or not. They have to be record enabled before you start uh, playback. Um, and with Reaper, you're able to record and disable recording uh, without stopping, um, but you can only punch in in one place. So we have something that's similar, like uh, item or time selection auto punch, um, it that will always record back to the start position, but we can only punch in one time. We can't change. We can't have multiple time selections or item selections and continue and just, you know, punch in in those certain times. So quick punch is a good way to punch in without specific um, like snap to grid sort of boundaries. And you just punch in and out whenever you want multiple times um, without stopping. And so it's a really useful thing and we can't do that in Reaper right now. Let's move on. Question from Randy, who does your hair, man? Well, no one does my hair and that's why it looks terrible most of the time. Um, I mean, I cut my own hair and I just leave it for months and you know, I, I do like three haircuts a year and I don't think about it. I, I think I'm just really lucky that I'm not going bald at my age. I'm, I'm really lucky to have long, thick hair, I guess, and lots of it. So moving on. Next question comes from Matt. Does every project you do start completely empty or do you record into a project that already has a master effects chain and other effects tracks set up and running? I would say that I lean more towards an empty project, um, but I'll use track templates and things like that within the empty project. If I'm starting a mixing project for someone, then I'm usually starting with uh, a big set of track templates. So I've got all my folder tracks set up and named, colored, um, but usually without any effects on them. I do have a set of kind of preset effects tracks like reverbs and delays, all kind of my, my favorite go-to sounds. Uh, that saves me a lot of time. But if I'm writing, I just have a, an idea for a guitar part. And so I just record it in and I build up the track from there. If it's synths, I'm, I'm usually just messing around with keyboard sounds and you know, that turns into a song and I just build from nothing. But I guess I should say that I'm not recording with the purpose of releasing something. If I was planning an album project, if I had pre-written songs and I was going in to start recording, I would definitely build up a template with all the sounds that I need for a certain style or, you know, I'd collect all the samples that I need and have effects chains built and I could just record in and get the songs out quickly with kind of pre-mixed sounds. I think it's easier to do when you're in a band or you have a very specific sound. Uh, but for me, I'm just, I just want to make music and 
any style that comes to me, really. Um, I never know what sort of sounds I'm going to be inspired by, and so I just kind of go with the flow. Next question comes from Pachu. How would you mix and master an album in a DJ mix type of way? Like Flume's Hi, This Is Flume, or Widow by Crywolf. I don't know this music. They connect each track together with little pieces of music. Do you mix and master each track, and then in a new project you do the connecting? Or do you connect before mixing and mastering? How do you maintain volume levels? So basically, it's, um, it's songs with little sort of interludes in between, and I guess it's more or less continuous. Um, I would probably approach those as separate projects. How do you maintain the levels? You know, that's something you would just take care of in the mastering. You would probably work with a, a mixing template, kind of, and or at least have sort of a, uh, a loudness target. Let's say like the kick drum is always going to hit at minus six, something like that, like some sort of reference point for the mixing so you can keep consistency between the different tracks. As you're going through, you're going to have those songs exported and you can have reference tracks and you can maintain consistency that way. But probably these are all done separately, put into one project for mastering, and then the, the final track order, the volume between each track, uh, the timing between each track, the crossfades and things like that, that's all take care, taken care of in mastering. I don't think it's probably as uh, complicated as you might think. Question from Cheng, is it possible for Reaper to toggle or move forward frame by frame accurately for video? So when I'm editing videos, I'm often going frame by frame. Let me just uh, set my grid to frames here. So to go frame by frame, I use option right arrow or left arrow. And what I'm doing here is a, a script from X-Rame, move edit cursor to next frame and previous frame. I've been using these for a while. I think these are in repack. I'm not 100% sure, but they seem to be. And it does round the numbers. So if your edit cursor was between between frame lines, you go forward or back, it's going to jump to that nearest one first. Uh, you could also use the, what is it? The nudge dialog. Nudge set, what is it called? This one. Nope. Uh, this one. Uh, so you would go to frames, uh, nudge, uh, edit cursor, and you can set it to frames there. Yeah, if you can find those scripts from X-Frame, I recommend using those. Question from Brian. Apart from the X32, what other control surfaces work with Reaper? I think pretty much all of them will. Some of them will need some sort of... Um, uh, a special driver, and uh, the only ones that come to mind for that are the Euphonics ones because they were never made to work outside of Pro Tools, basically. Other than that, um, I'm using a, a Behringer uh, BCF2000. This thing's pretty old, and yeah, it still works. I'm using it in the Mackie mode. Any of the new control surfaces out these days will work with Reaper. Um, you just have to choose whether you're using it as a MIDI control surface, as Mackie control, or or some other format. They all pretty much work, but often the controls are kind of generic, or they're specific to a certain software. Like certain features are are made for certain software. Like the Personas ones work best in Studio One, but all the Personas ones will work with Reaper as well. Uh, just like one or two buttons won't. So I don't think you can really go wrong with any of them. Um, just kind of look for ones that fit your needs. The, the basic, like, uh, track select and, and volume and transport controls and stuff, that should work in any DAW. Question from Tiki, how do you work when you're sick? Any tricks to circumvent stuffy ears? I'm lucky that I don't get sick all that often, but um, uh, what's helped in the past is just get a really hot shower and just keep blowing your nose into your hand. It's gross. Um, but just keep doing it until your head is clear, um, and that really helps. Next question comes from Margus. Is there a way in Reaper to organize files like Pro Tools does? So in Pro Tools, you set a location for the project, and it creates all the necessary folders for different files. In Reaper, it's a bit chaotic right now, at least for me. It's very annoying that a repeak file appears in the same folder as the track itself. 
maybe bad explaining, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. I have a tutorial on this already on reaperblog.net. If you search for file management, uh, this here is kind of just a list to the separate uh, tutorials on this. So the first one is media files folder setup, which is basically going into the project settings and setting this to a folder named audio files. Uh, this will make an audio files folder and anything you record or import into the project is going to be there. And that's going to be relative to where your project is saved. And then the repeats folder setup. I think that one's a video. Uh, it's not a video, um, but basically you just set your uh, preferences, paths, store all peak caches in alternative path, and you just choose a folder for that. Those are the two main ones, but also don't miss choosing your file names, the autosave backups. There's a lot of important things here, so don't you know? Don't take this stuff for granted. If you want to know where things are going to be saved when you record something or when when you import something, um, if you want to just never lose your files again, basically follow these steps in this tutorial and you'll uh, and you'll be in really good shape. Question from Harold, how are you? I think I'm doing pretty well. Um, compared to a couple months ago, I think I'm doing a lot better. Um, I'm having a good time doing this video. Really excited about uh, releasing Reaper WRB version two, um, probably next week uh, or this week when you're watching this. Um, and so that's really exciting and I'm, I'm pretty happy in general. Question from Michael, do you use other DAWs and why? And what is your top wish list feature for Reaper? I don't use any other DAWs. The only thing close to that would be uh, Isotope RX. I use that as an external editor sometimes, um, especially when I'm working with uh, films. And that's been a while since I've done that. Top wish list feature. There's nothing that really stands out in my mind. Um, you know, I, I usually come up with a feature request or bug report pretty much every time. <laughs> Seems like every day sometimes. But um, when I'm working on a project and I'm really into it, I I find little things that um, that can be improved or just are kind of confusing. And I don't even always write them down. I'm like 98% happy with Reaper. It's stable. Uh, it keeps up with what I want to do. Um, and there's and it's so deep that I'm always learning new things, and there's always stuff to talk about uh, with you guys. Get you excited about um, getting into the studio and making music or um, working more efficiently and things like that. So that's it for the questions. Thank you so much, guys, for sending in those questions. You can find our Facebook group going to uh, reaperblog.net slash community, and that will redirect you to the Facebook page. Uh, there's always links in the description as well. And thank you to everyone that has been watching the videos and has subscribed recently. Uh, anyone that has sent in donations, it's all so helpful. If you enjoy what I'm doing, please consider being a patron at patreon.com slash the Reaper blog. It's a huge help for me. Um, it helps keep things sustainable for me. I'm able to spend more time making videos. Um, I really appreciate all of you, whether you're a patron or not. Thank you so much for watching. So that's it for this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.